Hi, everybody. My name is Carrie Met. I am principal at Poland Regional High School. And my name is Carolyn Peinado, and I run our school's learning center. And we're making this recording today just to share with you the ways in which we work with ninth graders to help them be successful in high school. So Carolyn, why don't you talk a little bit about this program called BAR? Yeah, BAR is a national program that we've been using in our school for four years now. It's called Building Assets, Reducing Risks. It's a strengths-based model um, that focuses on building strong relationships between students and teachers and using a collaborative problem-solving approach to support kiddos that might be struggling to do their best work in school. And what's cool about this is that this is something that um, we've implemented from the middle school up and through 10th grade. So Mr. Vincent and I, four years ago, had an opportunity to join this program. And so the middle school started in seventh and eighth grade, and we, the next year, added ninth and 10th grade. So your kiddos are really followed very closely for four years from middle school to high school, where the, the ninth and 10th grade teams, um, similar to middle school, they meet once a week, they keep track of kids' grades and attendance on a weekly basis, and in those weekly meetings, really try to put some, put some plans together to help kids when they start to struggle. So all students are placed on a team with a common set of teachers. So your child is either on the teal team or the gold team. They might not know which team they're on, but that's okay. Uh, the teal team teachers are Mrs. Miller, Mr. Hayashida, Ms. Seeley, Ms. Seveny, and Ms. Ross. Currently, Ms. Seeley is out on maternity leave until November. So we have Ms. King filling in for her right now. The gold team includes Mrs. Howe, Mr. Collins, Mr. Wright, Mrs. Frida, Mrs. Williamson, Mr. Cantone, and Mr. Prey. So they meet every week to discuss all the kiddos that they've got in common and um, check to see that they're doing okay. So um, in those weekly meetings, teachers are using a very systematic method to look at all of the kiddos and um, really make sure they're aware of the students' strengths as well as their connections to school. They take a look at how the kids are doing academically, attendance-wise, behavior-wise, um, and if the students are struggling with anything, uh, the team will brainstorm possible goals and possible interventions to help them meet those goals. I would say that last bullet is probably the most important because if you if all you do is spend time talking about how kids are struggling and you don't actually put some plans in place to help move the student forward, then it's not really a good use of time. So I think that last part is the part that I think is most effective is, is the plans that teachers make and then implement with individual kids. You know, Ms. Med, um, yeah. if I can just say really quickly one thing, sometimes you as a parent might get an email from your child's math teacher talking about concerns in English and social studies. And you're like, wait a minute, it's the math teacher. Why are they doing this? That's because the math teacher on that bar team agreed to be the, the person to reach out to you that particular week. So that's sometimes a little confusing for people. Mm -hmm. So in addition to um, those weekly meetings that we discussed, the students do an activity called iTime each week in one of their core classes. It usually lasts about 30 minutes. And it's just, uh, they do fun activities that are focused on some of these things that you see on the slide um, from building the classroom culture to practicing their leadership and communication skills. It's a, it's a really great thing that they mostly look forward to. And the goal is for teachers to learn something about kids every week and then share those things with their other teachers. So in Absolutely. terms of the assets that they bring to school and what their strengths are. Yeah. All right. So I know I've had ninth graders. My kids are a little bit older now, but they were both in ninth grade and you have had ninth graders and we'll have one more ninth grader. So talk a little bit about a parent's role when their kid goes to high school. Yeah, so um, I have a fifth grader who comes home every day talking and talking and talking about school. And then I have a senior that says, uh, don't, nope, don't ask me about school. I don't want to talk about it. So, so it's definitely a little different, but it's just as important to maintain that connection um, with the students. So I think um, just being, being present and willing to 
to listen to your student when they're talking about school struggles, but also um, you might have to be proactive in checking their jump rope grades or emailing their teachers if you've got concerns. It's still just as important to stay on top of what's going on with school, even if your kiddo is a little more reluctant to discuss it. Yeah, and we send home a school-wide uh, newsletter every month, right around the first of the month. If you have not been getting those, please let us know. We will um, make sure that our settings are correct in Infinite Campus, but sometimes it also goes into your spam folder and your email, so check there as well. And then we also have uh, a quarterly E, uh, newsletter that goes out just to ninth grade parents with things that are specific to ninth graders and things that might be helpful for you. So please yeah. keep your eyes open for both of those things to know what's happening here at school. And don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have questions or concerns. Thanks so much and we hope your kid has a great year. Thanks, and we're super everyone. excited to be back in school every day. Yay! <laughs>